Hi. Uh, hi. What are you be drawing today? Today is Monster Art School time. We're going to do a Kraken. Do you know what the Kraken is? Yes, it's myths. It's Norse myths week. And what's weird is when I was a kid, when I was a kid, I used to watch this movie. It's on. It's on. Leave it alone. Yeah, I know. Let's not play with the filters while we're drawing. That's probably what I did. Yeah. That's how I got the mustache yesterday. But so, um, oh, I can share this to a group. Look at that. Um, what group can I share it to? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to do that now. I'll wait, wait till later for sharing to a group, I guess. Go away. Go away, thing. Okay. Anyway, hi. Today we're going to draw a Kraken. Now, a Kraken, the situation with a Kraken is, it's weird. When I was a kid, there was a movie, Luna, called uh, Clash of the Titans, which was all about Greek gods. Okay? And so when I was a kid, I used to, and, and at the end of the movie, what happened was Perseus went to save this woman, Andromeda, who was tied up to a rock, okay, and was going to be a gift to the Kraken. There's a big problem with that. That, you know what it is? What? The Kraken is not Norse. It's not. Is no. It's not Greek. It's not Greek. It's Norse. So the Norse, the whole idea of the Greek of the of the, of the Greek having a Kraken is kind of wrong because actually in the myth. The monster was a dragon that was burning up the countryside and her dad and the father of Andromeda put her, tied her to the rock so the dragon would eat her as a sacrifice. Which is really nice to do to your daughter, isn't it? No. Um, but that's what he was told by the oracles that that would save the day. But since we're not doing dragons from Greek myth, we're going to do the Kraken. What do you need, sweetie? Pencil? No. It, 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 Eraser? It, Ting? Just, just, yeah, okay. I need like a... Instead. Instead, what we're going to do is the actual Kraken. Now, the Kraken in Norse myth... I mean, not a big thing. Do you know why the Kraken was important in Norse myth? So it's a sea creature, right? So what was the deal with the Kraken? Do you know, Luna? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Well, the Kraken is weird. It's not like in the myths with like Thor and Loki and those guys. The Kraken is actually more from... It's more of a Viking myth about a monster that lived in the ocean would attack Viking ships when you were out kind of going through the ocean and it lived somewhere up north of Norway and the Kraken had huge tentacles that would come and grab ships and rip people out of the ground and I mean rip people out of the boat and and apparently eat people and stuff like that so that was the 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 monster the Kraken and there were Norse warriors who went off to fight the Kraken and I forget the name of the character if you if you watch the myths if you listen to myths and legends podcast they do a whole thing on the Kraken or at least on they, they mention it in a myth. So anyway, so the Kraken from the Norse thing kind of sounds a lot like what? Luna? Cthulhu. Yeah, it kind of sounds like Cthulhu, yeah. Yeah, and, and what, what has tentacles in the real world? A squid. A giant squid, yeah. So a lot of people think that the Kraken actually came from the stories of the giant squid. So people would see giant squids, and then they would, you know, get scared of them and... So now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a Kraken. Now, if we do it like just a boring giant squid, that's going to be kind of, you know, I mean, squids are cool, but they're not that cool, are they? What do you think? Okay, Luna's not saying anything. She's drawing cats. Cats of, are they going to have cats with squid tentacles? I think you should have cats with squid tentacles. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a giant squid creature monster thing with like other fishy kind of monstery parts. So it's going to be kind of be, Part Cthulhu, part Kraken, part, I mean, part Cthulhu, part Squid, part Octopus, all these kinds of weird creatures, and that's going to be our Kraken today. So the way we're going to start this drawing is, I'm going to start up here, and something I do when I'm starting a drawing is I, is I mark out where I want the drawing to end, so I don't go beyond that point. And part of that is so that just when I'm, des when I'm thinking about my drawing, I don't want to have the drawing go out here, because that's close to the edge of the paper, and then it gets cut off or whatever. So I'd rather have the artwork kind of in the middle of the paper. So especially when I'm doing comics, I have to do that. So it's kind of like I've been trained by that to do that. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line from up here, a little to our, a little like if this is the center of the paper, I'm going to move a little bit off to the side of the paper, and I'm going to draw a line going straight down. Now why, I draw, why I'm drawing that line is that line is kind of going to give me the angle for the for the 
ellipse I'm about to draw. And I'm about to draw a really big ellipse. An ellipse is kind of like a squished circle. So I'm going to draw an ellipse. So it's going to be thinner than it is tall. And it's going to come around like this. So we're going to draw a big ellipse like that. Okay. And what's exciting about angles in a piece of artwork is when you have one line like this, from a compositional standpoint, composition is how you arrange materials on the paper. What you kind of want to do is have things that kind of work against each other. So a more interesting composition is one that has angles in it. So I'm going to build an angle like this. So I have a cross kind of an angled cross in the paper. And an angled cross is a lot more interesting than just a straight up and down cross because a straight up and down cross kind of uh, looks very, what's the word? Uh, symmetrical. And symmetry can be interesting, but it's not exciting. Whereas asymmetry, when things are tilted and things are one, heavier on one side or lighter on the other, is more exciting. So I'm going to do an asymmetrical composition here. And we're going to end the drawing down here. So the first thing I'm going to do is, well, I already, I already drew my ellipse here. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a kind of a not, a, not a square, but kind of like a square with curved sides. So I'm going to draw it up like this. And then kind of near the, near the edge of that crack. And it doesn't have to be right there. In fact, that's a little too close for comfort for me. So I'm going to put it, I'm going to end it here. And I'm going to come across like so. And then I'm going to draw back around like this. And then I'm going to draw around like this. So what I want you to have is a shape that kind of looks like a square that's blowing in the wind or a sheet that's blowing in the wind. Like, can you imagine a sheet hanging on a line and it's blowing in the wind? So we're going to draw that. Then from the corners of this sheet, we're going to draw to a line that basically connects like this. So I'm not going to have so much of it on this side, but on this side, I'm going to have that line. And then I'm going to draw right along like this at that angle. Again, crossing this main angle, I'm going to have another line coming like this. And you're like, what does this have to do with the cracking? Well, you'll see. So the first thing we're going to draw, we're going to, we're going to get this line in there. And then I'm going to draw another line and I'm going to make an arc. And it's going to come from back here around like so. Very slight arc. And then I'm going to come up and I'm going to make a box at the top of this line. And then I'm going to, from a little bit over from there, I'm going to come down like this. And if those of you who know anything about Vikings, you'll recognize what this is right away. Okay. Can you tell what that is? It's a boat. It's a long ship. It's a Viking long ship. But it's technically still a And out boat. here, yes, it's a boat. So I just uh, boat. You're right. So, and down at the bottom here and the bottom here, these are going to be the, the uh, pieces of wood that hold the sail. And this is the sail, and it's kind of being caught by wind because the Vikings are trying to get away from the kraken. So we're going to draw Dad, this first. cats with squid tentacles are called flurkins. They are? Well, no, no, no. I mean, the flurkin, that comes out of the mouth, and that's from Marvel. But if the tentacles come from the bottom of their neck, I think that might be something different. And that's really just marble. They don't own the idea of cats with tentacles. So now here, I'm going to make this a box instead of just making it a square or a rectangle. And I'm going to come in like this and I'm going to draw it like that. And the reason is to make it feel like it's three-dimensional. Okay, so now we have a three-dimensional dragon, dragon boat is what they were called, or a long ship. Okay, now let's get to our monster. So we've got that so far. Now, right here, I think I want this to be a threat. Like, I want this boat to be, oh, it's about to be eaten. So what I'm going to do is, starting about halfway around the sail, right here, I'm going to draw a line Cthulhu cats, Dad. that comes like this. Cthulhu they cats. could be Cthulhu cats. That's a, that's a name for them. I think they could be whatever you want them to be, to be honest. Assigning names like that to them makes them someone else's thing. If you just call them Luna's crazy cats, it could be Luna's crazy cats. So now we've got this, and that's going to be the mouth of the Kraken. And inside this mouth, I think we're going to put some pointy things. And you know what those pointy things are, right? I don't think 
No? What would you have in your mouth that's pointy? Teeth. Teeth, yeah. So we're going to draw, basically, we're going to draw a zigzag. But we're going to come up to the same point and then back down and the same point. And each time we're going to make a little Y at the top. Zigzag, zigzag, and we'll come up and make these little Y shapes like this. Because since this is not a regular squid, this is a kraken, we're going to make it look a little bit like... Uh, this mouth is going to kind of have a lamprey-like mouth. So if you know what a lamprey is, <laughs> they're creepy looking. I know. So I'm going to do this to the mouth, like all the way around. We're just going to go around with this. And those are going to be his crazy teeth. And this is the inside of the mouth. And if you want, if you want to be really creepy with it, you can draw another set of teeth back here just by putting triangles behind the teeth you already drew. Okay. Creepy. And if you want to get really creepy, you can make a third layer of them, too. I'm not going to do that, but that's you could do that if you wanted to. And now, let's see. We're going to... That's his mouth. And then, because we have this line as the center of the creature, we're going to draw along that line. We're going to draw up a little. Maybe, like, right there where these two teeth split off. So he's buck tooth. And that's going to be the center of his mouth head area. So we're going to draw up a little bit, and we're going to kind of just draw around like this and what that's going to do is when we go about halfway around this cir this half circle here right about here i'm going to start a big what's that called uh not a circle a what do i call them again ellipse ellipse thank you we'll start two ellipses like this so one over here and one pretty much almost on the exact same side over here. So we'll have two big ellipses. And these are going to be gigantic eyes. And they're going to be really creepy. Because what we're going to do is we're going to draw that big ellipse. And then we're going to draw a second one. Start from the point corner here and come out like this. All right. We'll make a skinnier ellipse. We'll go like this again, like that. And that's going to give us the basic shape of the eye. And then for the the center of the eye, squids have these really crazy looking eyes. And we can draw them like a, like basically like a pill shape with a belly. Like imagine a pill with a belly here. And that would be the center of his eye like that. And we can get more into that as we go. And you can put, you know, lines and stripes and stuff. So then now, I think right above these two teeth, I'm going to have the mouth come in a little and down and come out. So it almost looks, whoops, squids have beaks. So I kind of want to give this a little bit of a beak, like a squid beak, but squids have beaks, but they don't, or do octopuses beaks? Maybe they both have beaks, I don't know. They do both have beaks. Yeah, they both have beaks. But I'm gonna have teeth, which both, neither squids nor octopuses have, as far as I understand. So good. At least not this kind of teeth. So we're gonna have a beaky thing, and then right in the middle here, we're going to draw a tr uh, an angle from here to here that comes around, that basically connects from the eyes. Hey, Dad, there's a new feature. It says, you could, on this phone, you could say, hey, you could wave, too. That's not a new feature. Yeah, if you want to you could also say, bring them on camera. Yeah, I know. I don't know what to do with that. I'm not sure how it's going to work. So, so we might do, like, we might try a, that at some a, point. I don't a, know. A thing? A, 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 a testing things out on Facebook? Yeah, we might have to try that out. That might be fun. Because that's not where Blood Start School is. Where we try some of these other things. Yeah, we'll see. So now I'm going to come from the center, of, from the top of this eye up. I'm going to come around like this, and I'm going to curve up. Remember that center line we have. So at the point of that center line, we're going to bring these curves together. I'm kind of making a, a rounded triangle with this line. And then we'll do it again. This, this time we'll come to the outside of the eye. We'll come out here. And go up. We can come out here and go up. So we'll do like a, a line out and then up. Now we're getting close to that top. We can go a little bit higher than that, but I don't want to go too much higher than that. So we'll do a third one of these, like so. And it kind of looks like it's almost got natural armor on it. And I think to make it look even more squid, squiddy, squids have pieces that come out like this on either side 
But I think rather than just regular triangles on either side, I think what we're going to do is we're going to draw, get that ellipse drawn in there that we drew before. Remember that? I'm going to get that back in. And then I think it'll be fun to have, instead of just a plain old triangle, we'll make it come up almost like their horns, like that. We'll curve it up, make them look kind of scary and creepy. And now in here, under here, I'm just going to draw a few curved lines. Like, see these, these curvy lines? Just to kind of make this look different, give it a texture. I think it just makes it interesting to have textures on stuff. Uh, it makes it have a little bit of more personality. And so if you want, you can do another, another ridge here on the armor, or the front of the body, or whatever you want to call that. And then back here, I think, right from the back of the head back to here, and the back of the eye, and over here, we will add, we'll, we'll erase this part of this line, and we'll bring it in a little bit, so it looks like there's a thicker shell on the outside. See how I did that? Basically, I drew this line in, and then I brought this around. I'll do the both on, that, on this side, too, so you can see how it's done. Now we need to get some tentacles in here. And actually, at this point, I can finish... I'll dr finish drawing the, at least the sail of the Viking ship. And I'm going to bring the pole of the ship down a little bit, just so that it doesn't interfere too much with his eye. And then I can put the pill of the eye right there. Psh, the black area of the eye. So that's going to go in there. No, it just looks like it's a pill shape. I, I'm just calling it a pill. It's not really a pill. And again, like sometimes just putting extra lines on things just just to like to follow the forms makes things look a little bit more uh, three-dimensional or creepy or textural. So now we've got... The wind is picking up outside. Now we've got this... <laughs> yeah. We've got this the, the sailboat crashing through the waves. Oh wait, it's not crashing through any waves, is it, Luna? There's no waves yet. So we gotta get some waves in there. So we'll get the we'll get to those waves in a little bit. Uh actually let's get those waves now. What do you think? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start down here. And what I want is I want the waves to kind of crash up against the boat. So I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna go one down two down and three and we're gonna make this one really big and we can have it kind of breaking against the boat, the side of the boat. And then in here, in between these, these original three curves, we can throw other curves. And I don't want to make them right in the middle, like I did with the teeth. I want to make them off to the side or off a little bit. And that way, what happens is they have this sense of moving water. So I'll draw some more of those like this and like this and we'll go and I can put some other ones in here like this just going into the background and if you if you saw the only living girl uh the first book of the only living girl I have a monster attacking a boat in that too and I did the same kind of thing with the waves so here I'm going to draw kind of circles but not quite like this and what this is is if you ever look at a wave you'll see that there's a foamy part where it's smashing against something, and then there's kind of a darkish part underneath it. So I always do these kind of dark circles. They're not circles, but these kind of shapes like that that kind of make it feel like it's a wave. Just a little bit. I don't want to get too much into that because that's way, way too far. So now up here, Vikings, when they go, when they go Viking... What they would do is they would put their shields on the side of their boat. And they always carried round shields. So on the side of the boat, you'll see these round shields going all the way down. And that's in a way how you know that how many people are in there. Because if there's like, you know, 20 shields on the side of the boat, that means there's probably 20 guys inside. And that's kind of dangerous. Or maybe 40 guys inside if you're only seeing one side of the boat. So you see the shields there. And then maybe in, inside here you can draw like a guy's head. Like, oh no, I'm just going to draw a silhouette like that. Oh no, we don't need to we don't need to get too detailed on them because they're tiny. So now we have some waves. We can do some more of these kind of angled white top white top waves like this. 
and then have more lines coming in like this. And that'll help build that idea of this cracking, I mean, of this boat being smashed by water. And we can even do a few on the other side here, like right here in front of the boat, we'll just show some curves like that. And really it's just drawing out, curving in, out, curving in, out, and curving in like that, okay? Just be a little loose with it. They don't all have to be the same size. In fact, it's better if they're kind of different sizes, okay? I think here I'm gonna do the same. I'll go out, curve in, out, curve in, like that. And sometimes you can have some more angles like that too. But keep it kind of loose and fun. And in front of the Kraken's mouth, because the Kraken's just coming out of the water, I'm gonna have some waves up here. And again, we'll just go up, down and around and up, and down and around and up, like that. And we can just create that kind of fun water splashing kind of sensibility. Now I'm gonna get these teeth in a little harder because I did them loose before and soft, but I think I'm committed to having them now. So once I'm committed to an idea, I can draw it in a little bit more solid. So we'll get these in, like so, and we'll get this dragon boat. Now the dragon boat, the reason they call them dragon boats is because the top of the head is a dragon. I mean, top of the boat, the front of the boat has a dragon on it. So what we did was we drew a, a square before. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it into a little dragon head. So we'll go back like this for a horn, and we'll come up, and we'll draw up like this, and we can come down and around and down, and then we'll go like that, and that'll give us the the sense of the dragon head of the front of the boat. We can even draw an eye on here and maybe a nose there. And you can put patterns on it. They always carved interesting patterns into stuff. So if you want to throw patterns in here, you can. Going down like this. Now, they always used to have seams, at least it seemed like in a lot of the pictures I've seen, which are mostly drawings because we don't have photos of Vikings. Those just have seams on their, on their sails, maybe where they had them stitched together. Now we're gonna get to the rest of the Kraken. I know, I've waited too long. So here we go. Let's have, a, let's put a curve like this. Okay, and we'll have a curve like this. You can make it like a curly cue, like that. And then here we can have another, we can have a, a curve coming up like that. And see how I'm making them curve back and around. And at the bottom of that, throw some of this water like this, these waves. And then inside this curve, we'll throw another one like this. And then maybe we have another curve coming out like that. And you see what I'm making is we're making the tips of tentacles and the tips of the tentacles are coming out of the water around the ship. And we'll have another one come on like, why you keep bumping into me kid, like this. They don't all have to curve under either. So this one I'm just gonna have curving straight. And again, I'm gonna do the thing with the water going around it like this. And since I wanna remember, I wanna draw around all the things. So I want it to feel like it's a three-dimensional uh, object. So three-dimensional objects have tops, sides, and bottoms. So for this, there's a top, a side, and we can't see the bottom, but here's the bottom side. And somewhere along here, you're gonna see top, side, and then it's gonna go under like that, see? So. Even if it's a soft object, like a curvy kind of tentacle, you want to have that sense that there's a, a bottom and a top and a side. So here I'm going to draw these lines. Actually, the sky doesn't have a side. What? Actually, the sky doesn't have a side. What do you mean the sky? I'm not talking about the sky. <laughs> Did I say this guy or something? You said the sky. Uh, you said the sky. No, I think I said this guy, maybe. I don't know. 
I don't think I was talking about the sky having a tide. So over here, what you want to do in order to give this a bottom, you draw under it like that. And this can be the bottom down here. And then for this curve up here, we'll bring a tentacle up. And we'll end it there. We'll see how we still have this curly cue. And right about here, we'll bring this back. And then we'll do the same like that. And so what happens is you're giving the feeling like it wraps around. See how that works? So let's do another one over here. We'll have this one come up like this and, and like this. And when we bring it around, we'll have it come towards us and then down. And if, one thing is if you're having trouble making the, the curves of the squids, if you look at the way squid tentacles work, they don't necessarily curve smoothly. They kind of have a bumpy curve to them. So it's okay if your, your tentacles have a little bit of like kind of bumps like that in them. It's fine because then it looks a little bit more like there's something controlling them as opposed to them just being swirlies. So I'm going to draw the top of the tentacle from here and then... I'm going to bring the bottom of the tentacle around like this. And I want this line to go like that. And then somewhere back here, I'm going to draw a dark shape like this. That's going to be the body, kind of the lower body of a back tentacle back here. I'm going to make it darker so that we know that the, the, this is an unimportant, but it needs to be there so, it doesn't, the, so the Kraken doesn't look like he's falling over. And then we can have some water here, some more waves, and we can have another tentacle way back in the background here coming up. Make it kind of small, because things in the background always get smaller. And so, if you want, like, squids don't have, do, squids don't have suckers, right? That's octopuses that have suckers. I'm not even sure. Holy cow, I can't remember. I think only squids have suckers. So I'll put another tentacle back here. I don't think squids have suckers on their tentacles. Right? Because their their tentacles are more for propulsion rather than for for grabbing things. Right, Luna? I think so. Yeah, I think their their tentacles don't have suckers. I could be wrong. If someone wants to prove me wrong, just tell me and I will try to remember. I'll try to check it out. So I'm not going to put suckers on these because that's going to take forever, drawing all those suckers. But if you want to draw suckers, go ahead. What I would do is just remember that the suckers go on the bottom. So if you can draw them, they'd be like this. But I'm not going to draw suckers because I think this guy doesn't have them. And now I'm going to give, I'm going to put some, kind of like what we did with the, kind of like what we did with the dragon. I'm going to draw, like there's almost like there's a spine in the middle of the tentacles like that. And that way they feel a little bit like they're a little bit more three-dimensional. So I'll do that here too. We'll go around. And just by giving them this like arc and then up and around, it kind of gives it a little bit more of a sense of something that's three-dimensional. So I can do that here too. We'll come around like this. And remember, as they get further away, they get smaller. Or as they curve around, they get smaller. So we'll do that here too. And you want to draw down around the object, which makes it feel like it's 3D, see? Okay, we'll do the same here too. I wish I had like a drawing pad. What do you mean, you don't have a drawing pad? No, I mean like an electronic drawing pad. Like oh, like an iPad? Like an iPad because I can, like, so I can draw on that, on that uh -huh. but then I could like, Color. Like, I kind of want to make like YouTube uh, MAPs. MAPs. I don't like animatics. Oh, okay. Animatics. So. So you wish you had some device to do that on. Yeah. Well. And then there's also. Uh, if you use my black stuff. computer, you can do it. The 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 little Cintiq. Little Cintiq. The one Jacob uses for gaming. Oh yeah, but. So now, I need to get like a editing thing. Editing program. Editing program and like hmm. 
you know, stuff like... Well, my main machine, my main computer has an editing program. You can learn it. No, I mean, like, like I have an animation called, program. There, there's if you something want called it. Kind Master. Mm, what's that? Like you put images, images, and images. Okay. And I want it to be something like that. Okay. I don't know what that is, but w w let's talk about it later, and we can but figure images, it out. Uh, yeah. So, in here, so I'm gonna make some extra curves because, unlike octopuses, squids have a lot of tentacles, so you can just put as many tentacles as you want back here. Because, you know, heck, it's a kraken. It's not a real monster, so, not a real creature, so we can we can add as many tentacles and make it as dangerous as we want, right? We can throw some extra tentacles back here. And I'm just gonna make them silhouettes because if they're small and they're silhouetted, that feels like they're in the background. So see this one back here? Oops, let's make sure our drawing stays in the lines when we're coloring things in. And this one here, I'll just kind of darken. Bring it down, and then this one I'll just darken underneath. Yeah, whenever something goes under, darken it. So this goes under, so we'll darken that, like that. And we'll darken this under here. And I'll let this tentacle go to shadow as well. So what happens is as I decide to make things go into shadow, it brings other things forward. So if I make the mouth, if I finish the mouth of this crack in here, I have to kind of continue the lines that I started over here with the teeth. And then what I can do is I can throw the center of the mouth in. And if you notice, what's going to happen is when I start shading in the mouth dark, the boat, you're going to see the boat better. I'm going to be right back. It's called bringing it forward. It brings the element of the boat back forward. So anything we can put behind the boat, like extra textures, or details or things like that. Anything we can do in here behind the boat will bring the make the boat look like it's coming in that it's in front of the Kraken. What you want to do is you want to make the person who's looking at the picture believe that what's happening behind is What's happening behind continues past the edge of what you're blocking. So if you've got like a boat in front of the Kraken, we want to make sure, we want to make believe that the Kraken continues. So if I create a dark area here and it kind of corresponds to that, that'll make it feel like the Kraken's continuing. If I continue these ridges and I bring it back behind the Kraken like that, it's going to feel like, and behind the boat, it's going to feel like the boat continues or the Kraken continues behind. And that's what's going to give it a, that sense of three-dimensional quality or real real life feeling. And let's get these tentacles darker here. And again, you'll see, like, if I throw another tentacle here, see how that makes the shield come, the, the back of the boat and the shield come forward just by throwing some extra tentacles there? And I'll throw some more curves here. So like maybe that tentacle curved around like this and came out over here. And maybe this tentacle comes like this. As long as we can, if we start something in the background and we continue it through, it'll feel more like it's, it's a real thing. So let's get some shadow under here. And then under here as well, we'll get some shadow. Make it feel like it's three-dimensional here. And then if you want to make these feel a little bit more three-dimensional, draw around them as if they're three-dimensional objects. So you draw under here and over around it like that there. And you can draw in like this. Just putting some more water just to make it feel more... three-dimensional there's all kinds of little tricks you can do like like that like where you push something into the background so like at this point if I want this tentacle to feel like it's behind this one make the lines on this one thicker it's one way to do it another way is to darken the bottom side of this tentacle now if I just darken it there it's gonna look weird that it's not darker here so I'll bring that shadow up past it like this 
and then it feels like that tentacle continues underneath this tentacle. See what I'm doing? I can do that here too. We'll make the underside of this tentacle here. That also helps to separate the pirate ship from the background. And then if you want to start getting, I mean not the pirate ship, sorry, the Viking ship. So if you want to start getting the Viking ship a little bit done more, well, these shields, right, they're hanging on the outside of the ship. So they'd be casting shadows underneath, underneath them here, like that. So all these shields have shadows underneath them. And then Viking shields had a, what was called a boss, which is a metal piece right there in the center of the shield. Not all of them, but most of them did. They have suckers on the bottom of their tentacles. Okay. They do? Yeah. Okay, I always thought that was octopuses. Is it octopus? Octopus? Octopi? Well, I don't know. Octopi? Octopi? And squids? I thought it was just octopus. Did you look it up, or are you, is that what someone's saying? Someone said that. Hmm. It sounds like octopus, but I could be wrong. could look it up on the internets. But again, I don't want to draw all those, all those suckers because that's going to take forever. So if you really want to draw suckers in there, you can. I think the the uh, the suckers on all this stuff here is going to be hard to draw, hard enough to draw. It sucks the energy out of us. Oh yeah, it just sucks all the energy out of me. Do you get uh, it? Get do I get it? Do you do think it? I get it, Luna? What do you yeah, think? It just sucks. Yeah, do you think I get all it? The energy out of here. So sometimes what I'll do if I'm if I want to make the waves going out, and I want to also draw kind of where the foam of the waves is, I do a reverse like that. So I'll have one going up like this, and I'll just kind of reverse it like this. And it kind of looks like energy from, like if you were going to do like superheroes, you might do energy this way. But what I do it for is to kind of give the impression that the water is foaming at the tip and then kind of turning into dark water behind it. So you can see this kind of edgy, kind of exciting kind of thing over here. So I'll bring some of that over here too. We'll come down. Are you looking up squids? No. You should How be. How do you spell critique? What? How do you spell critique? You mean Cintique? Cintique. C-I-N-T-I-Q. What's the program you're looking for, hon? And I'll do that down here as well. Ibis Paint X. I want to see if Ibis Paint is on. Oh, we have Ibis Paint on my iPad. Yeah, I know, but I want to see if it's on here. No, I don't have it on my Cintiq. But I have Clip Studio, which has animation stuff, and that's on my Cintiq. Luna. I know, but... If you want to learn animation, I have a way of teaching you. If you're interested... She gets quiet once I say, I can teach you. I wonder if that means she doesn't want me to teach her. Because even Photoshop has animation tools. They're just somewhat crude. But if you go to Clip Studio, that has animation studio animation Wait, tools. Wait, Ibis Paint on What? I have Ibis Paint on the iPad. Know, we do not have it on Cintiq. I know, but can we get it? No. It's free on the iPad. It's an iPad app only. It's not a program for uh, the Cintiq. Okay. Hmm? There's one ready. Oh, yeah. No, no. I'm not. I'm just saying, like, I can't, um, you know. <laughs> we don't have, but there are other programs you could learn that would be better than Ibis Paint. Ibis Paint's kind of a... a cheapo knockoff of, of, a, of, a, of a well I shouldn't say that it's a good it's a good program for painting but there are other programs that are much better for animation yeah I mean, I, mean, I, think I don't know enough about Ibis Paint to say it's bad it's not bad it's just it's not I the program start, like, that thing on. so now what I'm going to start doing is oh wait let's get these ridges on here maybe we throw some cool spots on him. Now, what were you saying, sweetheart? I didn't mean to interrupt you, but... I, uh, I was talking to myself. No, you are saying maybe you can... Talking to myself. Okay, maybe you can talk to yourself? That's an interesting question. Can you talk I to was, yourself? I was talking to myself. 
Okay, so I'm gonna draw these kind of dark circles, and they're supposed to be like just like spots on the on the skin of the. You're just destroying my studio, aren't you? Running around all over the place, knocking things over. You're just having fun. Yes, I am. Uh oh. Uh oh. One of the times I'm allowed in the studio. What do I say when I destroy when you destroy my studio? Destroy our worlds. Destroy our worlds. Yes. The destroyer of worlds has come. Ah, okay. I'm getting kissed now. No. All right. Well, I think as the destroyer of worlds has has started destroying my world, I am gonna get going because I want to show her some of the animation stuff. But um, I think we were talking Friday. We're gonna do a giveaway. Yeah. Right. And we're gonna put these all on on what on YouTube soon. And we have to load them all up onto Monster Art School. It's just a lot of time yeah. uh, <laughs> to do that. Oh, but we're going to try and do that, too. YouTube stuff, so... So we're going to try and do that. I, 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 have, up there. I need to get credit for that. You get credit? I get credit, because I mostly upload... I mostly do the uploading to YouTube. So, I hope you enjoyed drawing with us. And I see some new names out there. So this Friday, we're going to be doing... Tomorrow, we're going to be doing a giveaway of one of the pieces either from this week or one of the earlier pieces from Art Monster Art School. I'm not even sure. Uh, and it's going to be, there's going to be a, I think we're going to do maybe a, what do you think, Luna, should it be a, a Norse mythology question? Like a trivia question? Or what should we do? Luna? Oh, uh, sorry. What was yesterday? Oh. So should we do a Norse mythology what was yesterday? Yesterday was uh, Dash. Oh, uh, Hella. So we're kind of done with this. If you want to continue this drawing, I would just make sure that the boat has waves going up against it all the way down like this. And then just keep going with thing inside here with like finishing out these lines and sharpening them out. And you can throw textures like this. I always do something like this to kind of make it feel a little bit more three-dimensional. You just throw a little shading like this and uh, around the, on the tentacles here and just basically follow the form that you're drawing. So if the form of the object goes this way, draw across the form. So you can go like so. And also there's like, you can follow the form or you can follow the movement. So if the movement of the tentacle is going like this, follow the movement and that gives it more movement you can bring those lines like this and then follow the form like so are we ready to go luna we all done for the day luna oh and you know what vikings always had a cool symbol or some sort of symbol on the front of their boat so i'm gonna put like a this is not gonna be a cool symbol it's just gonna be a circle just because it's the zero boat i don't know maybe we'll put like some things like that on it oh it's got a a Viking, I don't know what, rounded star thing on the on the on the front of the ship. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe what? So, what are we gonna do for the contest? What are we gonna make it? We gotta go look back at all our tasks. Well, first. we know what the art. We know we're gonna choose a piece of art, but what are we gonna choose for? Like, is it gonna be a question, or is it gonna be what is it gonna be? Like how the format of. How are we gonna give it away? How are we gonna choose who gets it? Maybe the first one who's the first person who jumps on the feed that day. <laughs> no, we all know it's gonna go to either Penelope, Kimberly. No, that's not true. There are other people who jump on the feed first. I mean, mostly. It's mostly mm, gonna maybe. be Penelope, Kimberly, and uh, Jamie Lee Nichols. Maybe, maybe we'll see. Most likely. Or Sam, but there's a lot of other people who watch us too. So we'll see. We'll see. Anyway. Um, I hope you had fun. This was certainly a lot of fun to draw. And uh, on Friday, like I said, tomorrow, we're going to do a giveaway. And I think I'm going to start doing, and let me know what you think. I think I'm going to start doing the more advanced monster art schools again, but I'm going to make them more uh, project oriented so that they won't be quite so much like doing a piece every day, but doing like, uh, you know, like, oh, hey, let's talk about penciling a comic or let's talk about inking um, a comic or something like that. Yes. Let me know what you think of that. And, uh... We do Monster Art School on, I don't know, Monday, Tuesday, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday? Oh, you don't want to do Monster Art School every day? You were talking about that. 
Yeah, we were talking about it. Well, here, tell me what you guys think in the comments, what you'd like to see. If you have ideas about more advanced stuff, uh, more advanced drawing things, more advanced monster things. Because this is the beginners group. And uh, if we want to do more advanced stuff, I just want to have some idea of what people are looking for. Okay? And I will talk to you guys later. Have fun. I'm glad. Uh, thanks for coming and drawing with us.